Hey everyone, welcome back to Adobe Live. I am your host and freelance graphic designer, Anika, and I will be here today to talk about Mental Health Awareness Month. And I'm going to be using Adobe Fresco. But before we actually dive into it, um, there was this really cool stream today. I don't know if you watched it live, but in case you missed it, you can actually watch it on YouTube. It was about experimenting and exploring Fresco and Rich Armstrong from Tap Tap Kaboom was actually with me and I was hosting him. And it was amazing. Let me just tell you that I I had a blast. You can watch the replays both on YouTube and on Behance. And speaking of YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, hop on over to Behance. This is where we have all the friends in the chat. I want to say hi to you also. So make sure you come on in, chime in, and we can talk all about mental health and using art for therapy. So um, before we dive into it, I see so many friends. Hey, Wade. Hey, Val. Um, Oliver. More Annika. Yes. Hello. Um, thank you all so much for joining us again. I um, am really excited for the stream. I always want to use art as a means to express and as a means for um, spreading awareness in one way or the other. We were talking about the Create Waves campaign earlier today, and I feel like those are the real aspects and the real things we should all care about. And using your creative outlet, be it photography, be it illustration, be it graphic design, motion, video, all of it, you can use all of that to create awareness around the subject. But um, with that said, we have May, which is the Mental Health Awareness Month. And I want to use this platform to say that it's okay to ask for help. And to promote that idea, I want to create an illustration. And um, I started off with pen and paper. Would you believe it? Um, I'm someone who does a lot of digital art. But this time, I went ahead to my sketchbook right here. And I don't know if you can see this really well, but these were the thumbnail sketches I did. I started off with this one on the left, and then maybe that's right for you. <laughs> then this is the second one. We got back into some more. And these are actually inspired by Vincent Van Gogh's uh, Old Man and Sorrow. I don't know if you guys have seen the painting before, but let's actually show you how that looks in fresco. So um, this was the bigger thumbnail that I created, and I just took a photograph from the iPad. I'm using Adobe Fresco on an iPad Pro, if you're wondering. And wherever you see like these blue dots is basically where I'm touching on the screen with my hand. I'm also using an Apple Pencil. And if you've never used Fresco before, feel free to ask any questions that you might have. And um, actually, pencil and paper, not pen and paper. <laughs> um, and then we have this, which was a sketch. And I translated that to like a pencil sketch in Fresco. And I added a bunch of things. When I was actually making the sketch, since this is a slightly shorter stream format, I decided to make the sketch on my own personal time. And this is what I came up with. So this is how the sketch looks like. And when Rich was talking about having a, an extra universe and all of that, um, really resonated with me because this is like all of these lines are actually piercing through your mental health in this case in the sense of the world is looking at you from all angles and that is what I wanted to convey with this and then this is basically just you asking for help I added a little red telephone for help which is not really red right now but it can be and um, there's other elements in this as well so this is just a pencil sketch right here so um, I know there were a few questions in chat. I'm going to address that in just one second. I know Ruth had a really cool question about using um, drawings made in Fresco to Adobe Illustrator. And yes, you can do that. So there's this button right here, which helps you export and publish stuff. So you can actually open a copy um, in Illustrator for iPad or desktop. And when you do that, if you have the Illustrator app for the iPad already downloaded, it just redirects you and makes a copy in Illustrator. And same for desktop if you're on the same local network. So um, I hope that answers that. But before we um, answer any more questions, let's dive into our color palette. So we have the layers panel. And of course, I haven't named my layers. Of course, we have two color palettes here. And I feel like 
Um, I really like this one on the left, just because it has these very vibrant colors that I can use. Um, and if you've been following me before on Instagram or elsewhere on my live streams, you know that I really love purples and oranges and yellows. So I had to use that. But um, let's actually use something and make this vectors. So there are very cool jitter brushes in Fresco. Let's see. Um, over here, right here, which I'm going to use. Let's actually go with light jitter and make like some line work. But um, I love that everyone's really excited in chat. Clever says pen and paper. Woohoo. And Oliver is like pen and paper. What? <laughs> um, thank you. Well, Val says, well, love them. Hey, thanks for joining everyone. All right. Let's dive into what we have today. So I'm going to put the sketch on a less uh, opacity here and go on top of it with like, um, I think this is like a very basic light jitter brush. We have this little handy dandy brush setting and with like the latest updates of Fresco, we have jitter in vector brushes as well. And if you are someone who likes organic drawings and you think that that's your mode of expression, you can actually use these brushes, change the pressure dynamics and actually test it here. So let's say I change the roundness of the brush. I can actually go in and um, draw a line or a wave there just to see how that's going to look. I'm going to switch this back to 70. I think that's what I had it on and just go from there um and stony in the chat is also saying um some things about drawings which is great i would love to know if you guys um and i feel like with the pandemic it is also um super hard for us to express ourselves and i would love to know if you guys have ever expressed yourself with art and i would love if you can share in the community discord as well we have the photoshop discord i think that's where you can share it maybe in the art share channel but um i feel like with the pandemic all of our mental health have been compromised a lot and nobody gives it enough emphasis ever i feel like the more you say the more you need to say it and it is actually one of the top most um health disorders that anyone can ever have and I feel like using art as a medium to highlight that is something that I'm really close to. With um, with other struggles in life as creators, I feel like um, this is something that we can do to help you feel, you as a creative also feel that you're not alone. And I feel like that's a really powerful tool. So um, what I'm doing here is basically vectorizing my sketch so that I can use these line works as a reference layer I know we were talking about reference earlier today as well, but if you're using like a raster layer as a reference, you can only fill in raster colors. Um, but if you have vector line work, you can fill in vectors. And that's what I want because I want this to be scalable. Maybe I get it printed later on. Um, I don't know, but I want it to be um, at least possible. So I have a 5400 by 72 pixel square, um, square, no, poster, canvas size um, right here. And I have a 300 PPI as well. So it prints up to 18 by 24 with good quality. So um, yeah, I just want um, all my canvases to at least have the option to be printed, you know. So I went to this um, super cool art gallery here. It's called Art Gallery of Ontario, Argo, Toronto. And um, it had a really cool um, exhibition by Matthew Wong. And they had created their expression and what makes them feel closed in um, and like inside a box and that was actually the inspiration behind the stream and the idea behind the illustration because even when you're inside or outdoors amongst people you can still feel alone and i feel like a lot of us don't talk about it and we should so um we have a few questions coming in the chat and i will um answer that in just a second uh clever says i like that feature doodle art doodle add brush settings yeah absolutely the hand kind of looks weird um, I'm going to go through this really, really quickly just because I feel like I'm talking a lot and not um, finding the right balance between creating and talking. You know how it is with live streaming, but I love it. So um, Dorina says, can you save a fresco file on an iPad and open it in Illustrator on the desktop? You can. Um, Dorina is actually talking about that earlier. So if you uh, click here, open a copy, you can actually open it both on the iPad and the desktop Illustrator app. And if you're on the same local Wi-Fi network, it automatically opens Illustrator on the desktop for you. So um, in short, yes, you can do that. <laughs> 
Um, well, in the chat says, when I struggle with bad days, I write stories and illustrate the characters I make up. It's very calming. Yeah, it's it's um, essential even for your mental health because I feel like when you're, it's like writing a journal, right? So you find like a creative way to write a journal. All right, I'm gonna actually um, hide this and see how this looks. Not 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 too great, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, let's see. I love that Stony also agrees about the pandemic and like finding a creative outlet which i feel like is mandatory now so let's see okay so i love this idea of having these color palettes right here maybe i'll just um try to do this with like raster art raster ra raster raster art <laughs> right now and see how that comes up let's actually use this as a reference um for now and then fill in the colors so what i did was went to these three uh hamburger menu not hamburger this is called something else the ellipses here and go to set as reference and then i'm going to create a new layer on top and go to um, my color fill and then i'm just going to hold and press and hold down just to select the eyedropper tool and select some colors here so maybe this has like a purple color and just to show you how that's going to look that is basically um uh, how you can add color to your illustrations all right let's see here one second i am gonna get this out of the way here and let's see i lost chat for a second one sec guys uh one second so um i don't know if you all ever make any creative illustrations but I would love to hear more about it. So anyway, I, I got it under control. I got the chat back. So we're good. We have this purple color that I really like. I see that there are some spaces that I didn't want them filled. Didn't want filled. And that is basically because my line work wasn't perfect. So I'm actually going to keep my uh, keep going with my vector line work because I feel like that would be more um, organic in this case. So let's actually go here and do this. Go back here. Sean and Randall are joining us. Hey, hey, welcome, folks. How is it going? Let's see. Okay, let's go back. All right, I feel like now I just need to be careful. So the thing about reference layers is that you have to be careful about keeping all the paths closed. And that is the one thing that I feel like I don't uh, pay attention to when I'm doing reference layers. I think I don't use it enough to pay attention to it but the other way would be coloring in so i feel like that would be more cumbersome than actually paying attention to making the right kind of parts you know but um yeah let's see let's actually turn this layer off go over here and make this full screen so all i'm doing is basically using just a vector brush to create these shapes and getting it out there all right um let's see so we have a few questions coming in chat. Ruth is asking if I'm using CMYK colors and no. Um, so I am using RGB colors, but I can actually change that when I export this to Illustrator or even Photoshop for that matter. But since this is vectors right now, I am going to export this to Illustrator later on and then I can just change the document color mode. Um, if we have time today, I can actually show that to you. But if not, um, we can cover that in some other stream. But these are RGB colors. So no, this is mainly supposed to be like a digital illustration. So I am not using RGB colors. But nowadays you can also get RGB colors printed. Um, so it's not a big deal, I don't think. Okay, so I'm going to leave this just for now and not go into a lot of detail. I'm just going to go here and make these big lines and shapes, which is, I think, um, the way to go when you're making an illustration which has reference layers. Because... Um, you don't want to make too many lines that you have to fill in because it's just more cumbersome. You're just creating more work for you that way. And I feel like um, you don't want to do that. But um, yeah, Val in the chat is saying that she doesn't use these kind of brushes in fresco. And it seems like it's really great for filling areas with color cleanly when you paint bucket layer. Yeah, I love using um, reference layers. I feel like reference layers really make your life easy and like make it quicker the only thing about it is with the path also i messed that up oh hold on so um i feel like these lines are something that i want to get used to as well like 
the jitter brushes i use illustrator primarily for a lot of illustrations as well and i feel like getting used to this line is only a matter of time because you just feel like it's organic but when it's really not vectors you know i don't know it's it's hard finding that balance but i i love it i love um finding new ways to express and to explore a app and i feel like adobe fresco in my journey has been really really great that way because i have created all kinds and various um styles of illustrations with fresco that i wouldn't otherwise have if i were using another app for example but let's go here and see what we have so um clever says hope that's on the right layer okay um i'm confused now it is it is i just named it the right layer you know <laughs> stealing wade's joke from earlier today but um yeah it is on the right layer make sure to name your layers if you're not in fresco but if you are in fresco you can also name your layers a lot of people think that you cannot and it's a common fairly common uh, misconception but you can actually name your layer i love that feature there's actually the motion feature which is actually super handy when it comes to um naming your layers because you don't really have to care about naming your layers if you're just making an illustration and exporting a png but if you're actually using motion and exporting it to photoshop or using after effects with your stuff then definitely need to name those layers okay just making sure we have everything in the in the chat um we jamming in with the right layer pro tip yep yep uh, i use that <laughs> and um Well says I assume that as long as line art is clean with no breaks and the lines you can paint back it seamlessly. Yeah, absolutely. So um that is the thing. I did not have that with like the pencil sketch otherwise I would have used um I would have used just like the raster paint layers but since I wanted to demonstrate the fact that you can change the brush size and the brush settings I just thought it would be fun to create something like this. Let's go here. and feel free to ask me any questions um about the app or what i'm doing today and if you're watching this on youtube i don't know if i said this before but if you're watching this on youtube make sure to hop on over to b.net/adobelive this is actually where i'm interacting with the chat so if you're wondering who these people are if you're wondering who wade is he's in chat on behance so hop on over to behance this is where i'm at and the party's at so don't miss it <laughs> there is such a fail um way to invite you to the party but i promise it's fun i promise um wade in the chat is um talking about layers i love it let's go here okay so um i feel like we can now experiment with some of the things here and i'm going to turn off the reference layer just to see if it actually works um i mean i'm sorry the sketch layer and then i'm going to go here um go to my paint bucket select these colors i think this is the color palette we're using so i'm going to select this color perhaps the orange and um let's see oh that is that worked fine i think right and then i'm going to turn the line work off and see how that looks so i feel like there is still a little bit of little bit of gap here in the line work let's actually fix that i'm going to undo a bunch of times a couple times go here go to my vector brush not change the settings and go to black and i don't care about the color i'm using right now because i am going to hide the line work in the end so it it is not going to matter in the end and then i'm going to go here and select the orange again click here and this time it asks you whether you want it a pixel layer or a vector layer i'm going to go here and select vectors and right with that one click it's basically how seamless it is and you don't really have to go in and color in That's a different case if you actually want that texture. I know Cody does a lot of drawing in and filling in to make it look more organic, but it's totally your choice to do it. If you want to add textures on top with let's say a different brush. So I have like these favorite brushes here and I really like Kyle's Half Tone Big Dirty. So I have this guy um I'm going to use this purple go on top, create a clipping mask. Just as an example, I can actually go in and um create these lines here and now if i turn off the sketch layer this is some texture that i have on over here so i'm going to delete that for now because that is not what we wanted and then i'm going to go here maybe i can change the background color just a little bit go over here and maybe make this purple now it will be hard to see um it still has reference so i'm going to go here and release reference it's going to be hard to see for just one second because my um vector layer is actually black in color 
So I am going to go here, um, open a new layer and make it white just so you can see. And then I'm going to make a clipping mask. So now you can see the sketches is actually white in color. All I did was create a white solid layer on top and create a clipping mask so that you can see it. And now I'm going to merge it down and it's pixel. No, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so that's one thing to remember that if you have two vector layers and there's like a color layer on top i think i made it like a pixel layer which is why it was doing it but let's actually hide this and make it black and um then we can continue making our sketch and just to demonstrate that the fill actually works we can um continue making the line work okay i'm on the right layer i'm on the right layer yes i'm on the right layer makes sense okay let's look at the chat real quick i haven't been looking at chat but stony had a really cool question what's the difference between live brush and vector brush so with live brushes i think um val already answered it really well that vector brush is painting with vector and not pixels like your standard pixel and photoshop brushes live brushes simulate real media like oil paints i'm going to demonstrate that really quickly here if i have the time so i'm going to click here um hide this sketch and so whatever i was using up until now was basically vectors and this is i'm sorry wrong layer this is um the vector brush that i was using no matter how much you scale it up even with print it would not break and it would not look like it is bad pixels or pixelated these are the vector brushes there are various kinds of vector brushes so we have the basic vector brushes which were released with the first version of fresco and got updated on later on but we have jitter now and we also have manga brushes which are really cool we have g pen um all of these really cool kyle webster and adobe fresco team creations but let's go to live brushes and show you how that works so this is gonna be a game changer if you really love watercolors um let's go here it kind of emulates the watercolor look how vibrant that is i did not expect that to be honest but that is kind of vibrant but that's the difference it is pixels and these are not vectors so if you want to scale it up and if you want to create something just make sure that your canvas size is big enough and then you can just use um whatever brushes you want so let's go back here and go back here okay let's do this let's do this um i think i'm on the wrong brush now but if you can go to recent brushes you can actually select the size and the brush settings of the previous brush that you use in this file so let's let's actually go here and complete this sketch really quickly let's see yeah um everyone in the chat was chiming in about vectors and raster brushes i love it yeah Thank you, Val and Stony, and clever. Hey, I love the live brushes. I try to use them a lot of times, but I'm so intimidated by the watercolors. I'm like, should I really use the watercolors when I can just use vectors? <laughs> That's always my struggle. I don't know if you all feel it, but whenever I'm using, I love both Fresco and Illustrator. So when I'm using um, Fresco. For something, I'm like, should I be using Illustrator for this, or should I use Fresco for this? Like, it's always a struggle for me because I love both the apps equally, but I'm always at a constant battle with. Um, that's something that I think about and get anxious about. Like, should this be pixel art and painterly style, or should this be vectored and scalable and um, you know less organic, as people say? But I'm also a firm believer that Illustrator can create organic art. So I don't know if you. Uh, have seen Orlando Arosina's work but he has really amazing work it's mind blowing that it's made in illustrator and um it can create organic work it can do all kinds of things illustrator is powerful but um let's continue on with this sketch let me know if i'm really zoomed in to this i feel like i'm kind of zoomed in i'm kind of zoomed in right <laughs> maybe maybe i'm zoomed in all right um let's go here draw these really quickly and i made these concentric circles to make it look like there were all eyes on you that sort of situation and then i'm gonna go here quickly create these lines i'm not gonna put in a lot of thought into it just because i don't care if they're perfect and just gonna go with it so it's like piercing cloud sort of a situation here because it's like um I think this piece has to do with my imposter syndrome in a way that when I feel that I am not 
like my work is not good enough to be put out there with other people's work which is what i do at th- sometimes when i compare my artwork to other people to other artists in the industry and then i'm like is is this good enough all eyes are on me when i'm sharing my work on social media i feel that sometimes and i feel like with this piece um it's kind of reflecting that because i feel like these eyes are piercing and everyone's looking at my work is it good enough um what do i do to get better at it but with this composition i actually feel much stronger about my compositions and my art style because i feel like with consistency and with persistence you can actually achieve um a style that is yours and make it your own because before i made this i had no idea what it was going to look like and i saw that old man and sorrow going back to my um sketches here um i feel like this one was something that i wanted to do but it had too many things going on and then i was like um i don't know if i want to do that if i really really want to showcase this but to be vulnerable um with a live audience is something that i never thought that i would do and i am glad to be sharing this space with you all and i feel confident in my skills and the way that i can showcase um a product and be an advocate of mental health and um i hope that you this gives this gives you inspiration to put yourself out there and put your work out there just just being vulnerable with your community and learning more about them so i feel like this illustration is very close to my heart even though it's not complete yet i'm still working on it but the fact that it's coming together in front of a live audience is pretty nerve-wracking to be honest <laughs> let's get real over here um I have uh, there are uh, a few folks joining us. Um I know Alessandra is here. Hey Alessandra, hi. How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining us. Uh Maxi Funk, yes, Bruce, you're right. Maxi Funk, Orlando Arasina is amazing. I love Orlando's work. Um Voodoo Val says I drew with my left hand on stream once to draw a baby Yoda that looked like graffiti drawn. <laughs> <laughs> they look like graffiti drawn by baby Yoda himself. Well, 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 I expected no less from you. I love that. <laughs> But um yeah, I love that we can be we're in a safe space here on Behands and on Dobe Live that we can talk about how we feel as creatives and to share like a space and a community like this with you all is my pleasure. I am really honored to be here with you all. Um let's see here. I'm going to talk my way through this and learn um how to do this quicker okay let's see let's actually turn the sketch off and um no didn't want to make a clipping mask all right i feel like we are in a good place and i'm just going to do this really quickly a quick time check we are at the 30 minute mark so if you have any question um questions for me let me know i'm going to add in some of the details here and i'm pretty sure that these parts are probably not open but uh we'll not open not closed that's what i meant yes 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 um that's what i meant so well says it worked but just barely glad to be sharing the space with you too anika you rock hey thanks well clever also agrees thank you for sharing this is another lovely stream um thank you all for being here i really appreciate you all taking the time um to be here with us um for all the adobe live streams and with me today I love it. I love um being honest and like talking about feelings. <laughs> no. I don't. <laughs> Ironically, isn't it? But um let's see. So where were we? Okay. All right. I think this might need some help. I'm going to go here and add some more and I'm going to do this really quickly and add color we have this guy here i don't know whether we're going to get to texture but i'll try my best to get there um but if not i will be posting this to my social media so you can check it out there if you'd like we have this guy and some stars obviously there's going to be sparkles because it's like hey it's inspiring but should i talk about it in public should i talk about my feelings or my imposter syndrome so all of that is inspiring and the fact that there is like a pencil and a um wanna be laptop here and like a telephone which is like help all of that is symbolizing the fact that this person wants to ask for help but um is unsure whether they should or not let's go here but somewhere i want to mix so with the laptop screen i want to mix like text with the laptop screen so i want to make sure that this um 
somewhere says that it's okay to ask for help i'm an undo i'm sorry i'm an undo a bunch of times but i wanted to say that i want to mix text with this form of illustration just to say that you can ask for help and that will be the message for the stream okay let's let's go here really quickly and see what we have um let's see sony also agrees hey thank you um i love that um fogi's joining us i was just looking at chat just to see what's happening in chat i love you all in chat if i'm not looking at chat it's probably because i'm drawing but let's go here i'm going to add these details and then it's the magic is happening guys wait for it wait for it it's going to happen have some patience i have this thing about i feel like i am also sometimes thinking about patience with my artwork and i'm like when will i get better you know when you have those times when you're thinking about looking at artwork and you can recognize that your artwork is not good enough and you're like when will my artwork look at that look like that and um i always kind of struggle with that because i feel like your so when you first get into art your taste is um good and as you grow your taste gets better and then sometimes um it's harder for you to like get your skills up to that level and it takes time and longer but your taste develops quicker so finding like that balance is kind of hard sometimes but um yeah that's what i always struggle with at most times oh wait what happened oh i'm going to have to redo that and go here again go here And now I think we're done with like the vector version of this and I'm going to set this as reference real quick. I'm going to turn this back on and make um a color layer which is basically white so that I can see my sketch again. Oh, I'm going to Oh, no, then one that. No. I'm going to go here and set it as vectors and make a clipping mask so that I can actually see the sketch on this dark background. Of course it's purple. I'm going to make um this as a reference layer real quick and go back up on top. Go to my paint bucket tool real quick and um select some colors. Okay, let's see. Well, in the chat is agreeing with me and says I see all the rod and I'm like how can I do that? When will I do that? Yep, exactly how I feel. But I feel like we all do it. Yeah, that is true. I feel like all of us struggle with that kind of thing because um as creators we're often thinking about how we can get better at our skill and i feel like that is something that's really great and we all should do because if you're not constantly thinking about that i don't feel like we can actually get better at it because what's your motivation behind it but the motivation can be different for different people it can be putting your work out there it can be expressing yourself with art or it can just be creating art for fun So finding the right motivation for you to create whatever you are creating is something that's really important and you can only find that by experimenting and finding the right thing for you and i feel like you obviously don't get it if you don't find it right okay hold on i'm going to see if i'm in the right layer i am looks like i might need some more lines here so i'm going to add that here real quick let's see okay I am going to go here and add like this color and I just realized that I made a mistake because I didn't want this to be the same layer. So I'm going to undo a, a bunch of times here, go back here and um add some color. Wait, what was it? Here. Let's go here. And I'm going to go on this layer and change this to vector. Okay. Yes. We're doing it. We're doing it. Let's go here. Um the chat is uh, blowing away. I don't know where where I lost you all, but let's see. Um well, stars that have wait for it. Wars what? <laughs> okay. Yep, Star Wars. You might say the war in the stars. Oh my god. Yes, yes. Forgi, what's up? Forgi says I agree well. We're always growing and improving. Indeed. Um Alex, what's up? Alex is in the chat. Alex is going to be on a stream later today, so I'm really excited for that. Um Oliver says this reminds me of those old retro sheets you used to put between two sheets of paper and Stony agrees I've gotten to a point now where I can say can I do that but have I done it um <laughs> and Val talks about um memes and comic papyrus yes 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 um Ruth uh thank you so much for being here I appreciate you being here and um appreciating what we're doing and trying to 
reflect um our values out in the world okay let's let's actually go ahead and pick a different color because i feel like it's too much too much purple what how much purple is too much purple though? right am i right or am i right let's see um oh no i missed the line there let's go back so i feel like this is like a constant process for everyone who's like oh did i miss a line there what is happening here let's go here and i'm going to add some color here maybe i think this is this is the one that we're talking about uh i'm on the wrong there again <laughs> oops okay hold on okay i think i think we're good now right we're good we're good we're good folks we're good so let's add this and just to showcase how this is going to look without the line work i'm actually going to turn the line work off for just a second i feel like miss something here but let's actually turn this off and see how that looks so that's how it's looking right now and i love how that looks because without the line work the negative space comes into play and that is really really amazing for the kind of illustration i'm going for and um yeah i love it and let's see i want to see more chat because i know we're we're missing on chat here and val says why do you have to bring memes into this <laughs> i had to val i had to how could i not say memes when alex is in the chat right am i right um and let's see we have over here what's happening i'm just checking to see if you have any questions but okay secret fan of star trek yeah i i, I know that i know that about val but um Let's see here. I think I want to add more color to this. So I'm going to go ahead to this face and maybe add like a white color. So maybe I'll just pick this white tone here or um go here in my other color palette and pick this color. Who says we can't use more color, right? Wait, did I did I paint on the wrong layer? Oh my god, I painted on the wrong layer. I made everything pixels, you guys. I made everything pixels and I wanted it to be vectors. <laughs> Oh no, let me go let me go here and try to fix it. Oh my god, this is not what I expected. Okay, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's do this really quickly, okay? You pretend it didn't pretend you didn't see this, okay? Pretend you didn't see this. Let me let me do this really quickly. Hold on, hold on. We're good. Okay, we we we're, we're almost good. <laughs> um one second. Um over here and then I'm going to go this color. Clip clip and oh here yeah, those were not the sound effects that it makes but it's fine we have this here and this one this one this one and maybe this one oh we already did that okay let's see can we turn it off we can turn it off all right we we're, we're almost there we made it um i guess and then we had this one wait why is it not doing it that is so weird to me but let's actually hide this layer now because we don't want to mess that mess with that but um we um yeah we're talking about wrong layers what wrong layer i've been on the right layer all this while what are you talking about chat i don't know but we have these colors i think i forgot about the yellow so i'm going to use that for this guy actually yeah i kind of like that it's kind of it's way more vibrant than i thought it would be but we will fix that in just a second i know i was using the white for the um shape of the face which i'm also going to put on a different layer i'm going to put this on top just so that i don't mess with this layer now but i'm going to go here and go with white go to vectors um maybe the line work isn't perfect here so i'm going to go here again and go back to this there you go that's the line work that you're looking for and if you hold the touch modifier you can actually use it as an eraser or just like a clear mode in photoshop so if you're using brushes in photoshop if you if you're using a north american keyboard you can actually hold the tilde button tilde tilde button um and use it as an eraser and you can do the same in fresco so let's see here um i'm going to use this as vector oh oh no <laughs> <laughs> let's see um what do we have here i think we might have to use the lasso for this so i'm going to go ahead and click my lasso tool and go here really quickly oh i found it just when i was using the lasso but it's fine just to save time i can go here click my lasso go over here i want the hair to be like the negative space so i'm going to keep the hair purple i think and then we can look at more colors so we have this guy here and then i'm going to use vectors okay yeah i think that looks nice right kind of maybe 
Okay, and then we have this. Oh, um, line work. Make sure to make your line work really nicely. Unlike what I did today, I think it's just the fact that when you're talking and creating, it's kind of hard sometimes. But oh, there you go. I think that looks brilliant. Um, what do you all think of this? But um, let's see. We have. We have a lot of people in chat talking, and I'm just not looking at chat. I'm so sorry, you guys. Let's look at chat again. And Val says, "If I don't paint for mental health, I watch ocean documentaries." Oh, that's really fun. I watch the Discovery Channel um, when I'm not painting or drawing for mental health, but I love it. I love that. Um, <laughs> I was talking about how I drew on the wrong layer, and Alessandra says I took my glasses off, so I didn't see anything. Annika, that is perfect. Yes, you didn't have to see that. Um, I love it. And Oliver says that he can do the tilde key with the UK Mac keyboard as well. That is amazing. I did not know that. I just thought that it was on the US keyboards because sometimes you know, people complain about you not having that configured on your keyboard. but i know definitely that you can configure that for other keys as well so let's go here i'm sorry um lost my train of thought but let's actually go here and add some color to these guys again and um i'm going to use maybe this pink color here um along with this guy over here oh and my line work isn't so perfect but let's actually fix that real quickly um i'm going to go with my pen pencil pen vector pen here and fix it i'm going to keep an eye on the time just to make sure we are still um under we have some few minutes to go so we have some time to do this um let's see let's see okay i feel like it should be good now okay you want to bet it's good it's good we did it Um let's see let's use some yellows here as well just to bring in that contrast and i don't know if i want to use um some yellows here maybe this purple here for this one um knew that was going to happen glad i'm not on the wrong layer but that never happened um we have something here which is right here go over these lines a little bit I feel like there was this uh line here that I was missing that happened earlier as well. And I'm going to try to find it really quickly. Okay, I feel like we're good now. All right, I'm going to go back to this layer again and go to a different color. Let's see. This color? No. This should be here. Yep. And then I'm going to take the orange. I am honestly not a fan of this to be honest. Honestly not a fan of this to be honest. Yes. um but i feel like this yellow kind of brings everything together oh there you go that's the line that i was missing i found it i found it hard way maybe now it works i think so yes yes okay yes it worked so i think now i'm going to go with like this lighter color here and fill in this color and uh, i'm not going to worry about anything else like the squares being um filled out because i can fix that later but let's actually change and the beauty of using these vector shapes in like reference layer is that i can go in and manually like change it on the fly and i don't have to care about this layer being turned on if i'm on this layer which is vector i can quickly go over here and make it let's say i want to make it white so i can just click here and make it white and actually that doesn't look so bad so maybe i'll keep it that way um i do see that there are these lines that i didn't want So maybe later on, when I'm actually finishing the piece, I can go in and color in with a little bit vector on a different layer or the same layer. It doesn't really matter. Whatever works for you works for you. Um, let's go ahead and um, see here. We do have some things here which are um, another color. I'm gonna use pink, this magenta pink sort of a color here, just because I want to make the phone this color. But I can also leave it blank. So let me see how that looks. Yeah, I don't like that. Let me let me undo that. Um I'm going to make this probably. Okay. I see there are some issues here, so let me actually fix it real quick and see how that looks. Yeah, I think I think this is going to work. Okay. Let's let's close these lines. What is this? I don't remember this being a shape. What? What is the shape? Okay, let's go back. Okay, I'm going to go back to this layer really quick and make sure we were doing this. Yep. Got it. Got it. And I'm going to use the 
orange for the lamp because why not right and maybe maybe i'll actually leave the top part um what did i do oh i use the same color that makes sense uh, maybe i'll just leave the top part to be nothing but just the negative space so if i turn this off it is kind of looking like this i am not a fan of the orange here so maybe i'll pick like this pink color here um then maybe i have to change this color so let's actually so it's a lot of hit and trial because you don't know how things are going to look later on and you just have to kind of experiment and play with the colors a bit and i really love doing that in this case because it's super easy and super handy you can do that in just a quick second now i'm going to go here maybe i find this color here um maybe i find just like a white um that i want here um i can always go in on a new layer use a vector brush go in zoom in and then just color in to this shape and it will be seamless obviously as a png you don't know what what it looks like from the inside so you can do that if it's like personal artwork but if it is um like a client piece you can also do that in case you want like the original file and save a copy and then merge it down on a different file and save versions so let's see um stony is going hey bye stony thank you so much for joining i'm sure you already left when i missed that but thank you so much for joining me um today ingrid and afroja thank you so much for being here in the chat at school this is amazing i'm learning a lot with you and oliver says so much dance so quickly love it um val says these colors look so good together how did you choose them so um i think i talked about that a little bit but my brand colors and all the colors that i always use um they're um purple i don't think they're here yet but like all the colors that i some like i have this color palette which is by fresh cake and he's an amazing creator fresh cake does a lot of pastel colors what is this get out of here we um talked about his color palettes um we have spoken about that earlier but we have adobe color 2021 here and i sort of tweaked the purples that i found here and the oranges and made this color palette that we have and um just going off from there i kind of really always like the purples and the oranges and the yellows and this pink was a new addition i never used this kind of bright vibrant pink um or whatever the hex code is for this but i never used this and this was the first um this is what it looks like and this is this is making if you if if i go back to here i did not have pink earlier but i added that later because i felt like it needed like that zing and with that i needed some some other color so yeah that that that's how i decided i hope that answers your question um val says also your verbal narration is very relatable hmm does this work i think it works oh uh-huh. what do i do no it's fine i'm fine <laughs> everything's everything's fine yeah <laughs> um Yeah, I just want to be authentic with you all. Um with that said, let's go here and see what all we have. Okay. So, I think I want to do some yellows here as well. So, let's bring that in. Um this might look good with the yellow eye. We're going to fill in some more of these. I'm going to get some colors here. Go get some of this one and maybe some yellow here. Um Afroja thank you so much for joining us and maybe maybe the pencil is yellow right or maybe it's orange i don't know we'll we'll see and then we have this purple um of course or maybe like this yellow i don't know we'll see we'll see we can tweak the colors later and then the background is going to be um for the laptop or this notebook that we have here i'm going to keep the background to be um just this the negative space just because i want to write something in it and i feel like it would be really really against um the legibility if i fill in something with that so i feel like making illustrations i never approached it like design in a way and i always thought that illustrate it you need to have a different skill when you're making illustrations but illustration is basically drawing and designing at the same time because with thumbnails you um you essentially think about what style you want to go with and it's like making iterations of your logos and then you go ahead and to go ahead to make other things so with thumbnails for illustrations you think about what my logo could look like and these are the iterations and with color you make those iterations and create the design over and over again and um i feel like that's how i can relate both design and illustration and that has always been like a mental struggle for me before 
once i figured that out i was like oh this is not as bad right <laughs> um well so this is giving me the urgent urge to paint well go for it i would love to see what you create um you can share any and all of your creations inspired by what we're do- doing here today with me on social media i am a n i k a a g g on social media both on behance and youtube um youtube instagram i mean instagram but i'm also on youtube so you can check that out as well um i would love to see what you all create because um i feel like I am here to inspire you and help you create something in Fresco because it's one of my favorite um app and I feel like if you create something I would love to see it. I'd love to see it. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> okay, let's see. We have some yellows here. Let's see. How how much time do we have? We have the uh, we have about 7 minutes left. So if you have any pressing questions for me and if you're watching this on YouTube, hop on over to Behance. That's where I'm reading everyone's chat if you're wondering. Okay. Let's go here and pick this. No, didn't want to do that. Let's go here, go on top, and zoom in just a little bit. I'm actually gonna turn the line line work off for this, just because I don't want to go away. Oh, okay. So now I'm gonna go to um, lock. Isn't there a lock transparency for a vector layer? That is so weird. I thought it was. Oh, that is interesting. I did not know that there was no lock log layer for transparency for a vector layer. But in case this was a raster layer, you could actually lock alpha transparency and paint on top. But let's actually go here and um, make this a different color. Okay, I see where it is. I can just go in here and maybe make this a closed shape. Closed shape right here. Is it working? Am I doing it? I'm doing it, right? <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Aval says, "Anika, where will we find this project when you are finished? Behance on Instagram. Yeah. Um, my Instagram would be a good place to check it out. I will post my finished project there. Um, let's see. We are gonna move past the thing that just happened because it's gonna take a while to redo the colors there. So I'm gonna do that in my own time. Let's actually bring in some of the oranges. I feel like that's really less. And I, I feel like I want to look at." Like I want to turn off the sketch to just to see how it's going to look later on in the end. With that said, I do want to add lines to this. So I'm going to use my jitter brush and use like white here because um with this initial idea I had I wanted to create like you in like a cage. So like this hair thing is sort of like you being inside a cage and sort of like that look. So I'm gonna try to achieve that really quickly here, and maybe make something over here. Hey, look at that! Not too bad, right? So it's sort of like a cage, but also hair. Um, sort of, maybe. Yes. Okay. Let's see. So I think with like more more illustrations, and the more you create, you kind of give in to being loose and um thinking about what's happening and how it's gonna go. Wait, are we live yet? We're not live. What happened? I see chat um saying that there's an early man hammer, but I don't know what happened. Um, let's see. I'm gonna just check to make sure that we're still live. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna continue adding color while we make sure that we're still live. and let's see here i'm going to turn these sketch layers off and see how that looks okay feel like we are live aren't we okay just making sure that we are still live friends but um in case we are not um let's see here All right. So these are all the colors that we have for now. I'm going to continue working on this um as well while we figure it out and we have a little over 4 minutes left for the stream today. Um let's see here. We have some colors here that I'm going to pull in. I want this color here. Maybe I want this over here as well. Maybe maybe this one. Okay. Let's see. And then let's actually pull the white in here. 
the not quite whites maybe this one um this this kind of kind of can work so i'm going to pull in the purple but um i do want to say it's almost that time thank you so much for joining us today i hope this inspired you and helped you with your mental health struggles it is mental health awareness week week month for all of me so um make sure to share your creations and spread the word and i feel like asking for help is something we all struggle with and we can all um incorporate that with our creative styles i want to say um don't uh, stick around for the creative express stream with alex lazarus immediately followed by this stream and then there is a premium challenge with ryan selby so make sure to tune in for all the awesome content that we have over here on behance and adobe live and if you're watching this on replay i hope you have a great day and a great week ahead of you and thank you so much for tuning in thanks a lot you all and hope you have a safe and um fun creative day ahead of you thanks all and i'll see you next time bye for now